Today I'd like to continue our devotional study on the clarity or perspicuity of the scripture. And as we get started today, I'd like to read from Psalm 119 verses 97 to 103. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. You, through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimony are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients because I keep your precepts. I have restrained my feet from every evil way, that I may keep your word. I have not departed from your judgments, for you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than the honey to my mouth. And then again over in Psalm 119 and verse 29. Your testimonies are wonderful, therefore my soul keeps them. The pre-reformer, John Wycliffe, that we discussed in my last devotional, and later William Tyndale, laid the groundwork for an English translation of the Bible for the common man. And as a result, both were condemned as heretics, and Tyndale paid the ultimate price with his life. And they, like Daniel Webster, one of the weightiest thinkers and possibly the finest orator America ever produced, delivering a stirring speech at the completion of the Bunker Hill Monument and referring to the Pilgrim Fathers and the Bible, he said, they brought with them a full portion of the riches of the past in science, art, and morals, religion, and literature. The Bible came with them. The Bible is a book of faith and a book of doctrine. It teaches man his own responsibility, his own dignity, and his equality with his fellow man. I believe that the Bible is to be understood and received in the plain, obvious meaning of its passages, since I cannot persuade myself that a book intended for the instruction and conversion of the whole world should cover its meaning in such a mystery and doubt that none but the critics and philosophers can understand it. And for these, the Protestant movement birthed during the Reformation, the Bible is the sole authority concerning faith and doctrine. And that that scripture is as clear today as it has ever been and is open to all. Unlike the Roman Catholic Catechism, which states, the task of giving an authentic interpretation of the Word of God has been entrusted to the living teaching office of the church alone. So, as to be clear, as we continue this study today, and we finish this study today, let's take a look at what we mean by the clarity or perspicuity of the Scriptures. And I think that Larry Pettigrew, professor at, uh, of theology at Master Seminary, has an outstanding contribution that was published in the Master Seminary Journal. And he has it divided into two sections. What does perspicuity mean, or the clarity of Scripture uh, not mean? And then secondly, what does it mean? First of all, what does it not mean? Number one, perspicuity does not mean that all scripture is equally clear as to its precise meaning. And that should be obvious to all. Even Peter said that some of the writings of the Apostle Paul were hard to understand. The doctrine of perspicuity of scripture does not mean that the teaching of scripture is everywhere equally simple then. And perspicuity does not mean that all scripture is equally clear as to its precise meaning. 
The doctrine of the perspicuity of Scripture does not mean that the teaching of Scripture is everywhere equal or simple. But what does it mean? Well, first off, it means that the Scripture is clear enough for the simplest person to live by. And on the other hand, perspicuity also means that the Scripture is deep enough for readers of the highest intellectual ability. There's great depth to be found in God's Word. Perspicuity means the Scripture is clear in its essential matters. And perspicuity of Scripture means that the obscurity that a reader of the Bible may find in some parts of the Scripture is the fault of a finite and sinful mankind. Perspicuity also means that the interpreters of Scripture must use the ordinary mean or the ordinary sense of words. And the perspicuity of Scripture means that even an unsaved person can understand the plain teaching of the, of the Scripture at least on an external level. Perspicuity means that the Holy Spirit must illumine the mind of the reader or the hearer of the Scripture if he is to understand the significance of the Scripture. And the perspicuity of Scripture means that in accordance with the priesthood of the believer, every Christian has the right and is bound to read and interpret it for himself so that his, as quoted by Hodge in his systematic theology, faith may rest on the testimony of the Scriptures and not on that of the church. It is illogical and a denial of the affirmations of Scripture themselves to claim that they are obscure and not clear in their meaning. And further, it is not to the Church Fathers or the Roman Catholic Magisterium or any other high-minded theologians that the Scripture was given, but to the common person, like those of Berea, who, as we read in Acts chapter 17, verse 11, received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the Scripture daily to find out whether these things were so. So, while the Roman Catholic scholars like Anthony Wilhelm might suggest that the best way to receive God's word is when the scriptures are read at the Mass, I'd like to give a better suggestion. The best way to receive God's word is to open the Bible and prayerfully read it and ask the Holy Spirit to illumine it in your life. And let me close with one last verse that is found in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in the dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts.